Hi there. We're Melody and Ron Bacon. Hello. And uh, we are both psychotherapists. I'm a psychologist. And I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist with training as a pastor uh, initially. So, and Melody has a master's in history. We just come with all kinds of experience. <laughs> well, we've been in practice for 20 plus years working with couples, families, individuals, all things to do with, particularly with relationship challenges. Mm -hmm. So we have designed this uh, YouTube channel to kind of address all the different kinds of things that can come up in relationships, but specifically we want to focus this one on relationship challenges that have to do with addiction and even more specifically, if you're the parent of someone whom you suspicion may be using uh, drugs or have a problem with alcohol, or maybe you know this for a fact, and either way, you're wondering if you're overreacting or perhaps you've even been told by your child uh, that you are overreacting, and then how do you know what to do from that point? So I'll let Ron start off with that. Right. Well, in this day and age, uh, we're making this in 2018, that mm -hmm. uh, you send your kid off to college, they are using. Yeah. I mean, whether that is alcohol, whether it's pot, whether it is Adderall or something else to stay up and uh, do their work, uh -huh. whatever it is, uh, there seems to be a fair amount of experimentation. I know that going to see uh, our son at college, his freshman year, and going to his dormitory and outside the dorm was a large mound of hard alcohol uh, bottles. Mm -hmm. Now, they weren't all his, right? Uh, but they belonged to the people he lived with. Yeah. And it was hard for me to believe he hadn't also taken part in some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that they are using is not the question. It's is it using to the point of problem? Mm -hmm. And uh, when is it a problem? How do you even know? And uh, certainly we expect that kids go to college to complete classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was <laughs> the idea behind it, at least from a per uh, parent standpoint. Yes. And if the classes aren't being completed, that's a good indication that there's a problem of some kind. Again, that doesn't mean it is alcohol. Right. It could be that you have a very bright student who has an undiagnosed learning difference that's now showing up mm -hmm. with this kind of pressure. College is another step up. Yeah. And they may not be able to keep up with the skills they have. So that could be a reason why they're doing poorly. So there's various things that you might be observing and not just college age. Yes. You know, it could be uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. But one of them is it's easier in high school because you have more access to their grades. Once they're in college, um, you know, it's a little more difficult. But you become aware one way or the other that they are not doing well in their classes, maybe failing some of them. And it could be that there's a substance abuse yes. issue or there's an undiagnosed learning difference, there could be uh, depression. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you don't want to immediately go to that uh, addiction as the, the issue, uh, but you also want to rule out these other things by having some kind of a, an assessment by a professional a psychologist, marriage and family therapist, licensed professional counselor, somebody in the mental health field who can assess uh, what might be going on. There, any college has a student services mm -hmm. place and a clinic or some kind of place where a student can go. And right. if they haven't may access that, then uh, you can just plain require it. This needs to happen. Uh, that if they're dependent on you financially in any way, you have that leverage. And right. you hate to use that necessarily, but it's certainly there. They know it, you know it, so you might as well... Mm -hmm. uh, just own that. I'm not willing to continue this unless something is, this is addressed. I'm not willing to continue to pay for right. your college. Unless, Housing, whatever mm -hmm, it is. Unless mm -hmm. you get this issue addressed with regard to the um, 
the grades or, yeah. or, or something your is wrong here based on the evidence something uh -huh. is wrong and needs to be addressed that's it well let's say they are doing okay in school mm -hmm. um, some people can for example binge drink a lot and still maintain right. um, average functioning Sure. Um, uh, and yet you're still concerned because um, maybe you're you're observing or maybe uh, some a friend of your child has reported their concerns mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. their use of drinking. I had a client uh, college age who uh, that was the situation with her best friend being uh, very concerned about her uh, well-being because of her drinking. And my client actually reported to me that she would wake up in some strange man's bedroom mm -hmm. and not remembering how she got there. But her friend was concerned a couple of times with just uh, the amount of alcohol and, and had brought her to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. That being said, my client was not failing out of any classes in college. <laughs> Which but, is pretty amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. But she she had limited her time. That's why it's binge drinking. She didn't mm -hmm. drink every day, but she did on the weekends to the point of being in, um, in, in you know, danger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might uh, you might have uh, a friend or somebody giving feedback. Again, it's difficult if, if a child is in um, high school, you have a little bit more ability uh, but not a hundred percent to know what they're doing um, another one at least in certain states where they've legalized it now is pot even though high schoolers are not supposed to be um, having access to it legally um, it it has become a, a larger issue than it was and pot is much more uh, potent than it was when we were <laughs> in college and so they could be smoking that and have, again, it's not obvious. They're not drunk in the way somebody is who's, you know, gotten inebriated, but they're, um, they're going to exhibit certain things uh, when they're high. Um, so what, what would you suggest a parent evaluate in terms of, you know, whether or not they think... Um, their child might be on that edge of not really just being in the bell curve, for example, of especially college mm -hmm. age experimentation, but starting to move toward a problematic um, addiction. Mm -hmm. One is that uh, an addiction doesn't just stay static, even though it can for a time. Okay. Um, I worked with one guy, he went through law school, he was using cocaine, mm -hmm. he took his bar exam on cocaine, and then he continued to practice law for a number of years. He mm. had been on cocaine for 12 years. Wow. That's and a it long was time. just as it was uh, generally seven years, and then there's treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, things have with gotten cocaine. out of hand. Uh, that's, he was snorting it. Uh, with people who are freebasing it, it was three years. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it comes to a crashing halt sooner. But in any event, he was 12 years and he had been using at a steady rate. It just seemed to enhance and benefit mm -hmm. him and all that. And mm -hmm. then it just took off mm -hmm. and he began using uh, much more. His life became unmanageable and that's when he got into treatment. Uh, so just knowing that that is gonna happen, you can't hide the problem indefinitely. Yeah, over time it'll start to get worse. It does. And so, you know, these various things, uh, tickets, you're gonna have a number of mm -hmm. tickets and it's always the police fault. Right. Um, but you're the one paying for it. If that's the case, then find out how the person getting the ticket would feel the pain of paying for the ticket. Yeah. And that may mean not having a car. Uh huh. You know, that, wow, we'll take care of this problem. And that's not being uh, tough on them, even though they think it is. It's harder for you to do it. That's why they have the car in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's because it was going to be easier for you. So you have the tough love is on you and you sell the car, you get rid of the car, or you impound the car, you do something with yeah. it, take care of the problem. You've, uh, you know, if you have provided the car, that's a recourse. But also I think that the real issue is of this observation of 
movement from a certain level toward a higher level of problems. Mm -hmm. And in AA, the first step says that we recognized our lives have become unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And I think if you use that as a guideline, is this person's life becoming un unmanageable? Mm -hmm. Uh, are they getting tickets? Mm -hmm. Are they forgetting appointments? Mm -hmm. Are they missing? Uh, let's say they're a kid who, uh, you know, goes to community college, lives at home, but works, and now they're over sleeping and missing work. Um, they're getting more problems with uh, either traffic tickets or in minor fender Various benders. Things, yeah. You just start to see where it it goes from one level and then all of a sudden now it, it's going to continue to get worse. It, yes, and you can have your belief, I believe this is a problem, mm -hmm. and how to say that while sitting backwards rather than forward. If you're coming at the attic, you're going to get a defensive response mm -hmm. of that I think this is problematic. I'm not going to be funding this indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Those are true statements. Um, I'm concerned any of those things are in if you're not quite ready to take action then you don't take action mm -hmm. yet um, I'm not going to fund a failing effort you know that yeah. I'm not going to continue to pay for something for you to do below your capability so yeah that first step uh, we admitted that means the person has to say I have a problem yeah. and if they're not saying they have a problem to be asking when would that be? What is their mm -hmm. red line? Just to get curious. Yeah, to ask and, them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing this. I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. At what point would you become concerned? What would you have to see? Exactly. If, if I were in your shoes, I would call this a problem. But mm -hmm. I'm not in your shoes. You're in your shoes. When would it be a problem mm -hmm. for you? What and, would be your guideline? Mm -hmm. And to really work to establish more of a, initially, uh, a, a dialogue rather than an inquisition. Yes, definitely that. And uh, that also requires that you've made some effort to think through this mm -hmm. of what am I really willing to do or not. And it's not always easy to know, but one of the, the rules of thumb we, we recommend for our clients is you ask yourself, is this going to support addiction or is this going to support sobriety? Mm -hmm or under-functioning in school versus success in school. I mean, you can pick mm -hmm. different, different things that you're looking at. And if I let my child who's now gotten, you know, two DUI tickets continue to drive a car that I'm providing for, uh, am I supporting their continued use of alcohol um, problematically? Um, most likely I am even though did I cause their alcoholism or to cause them to use? No. Mm -hmm. We're talking and assuming as though the you, the parent, doesn't have any kind of chemical problem. And yeah, that's true. if anyone in your life has ever said, I think you drink too much yeah. and you've said, no, 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 I can tell you where this discussion is going to go with your student, um, your, your child. They're going to put it right in your face. Mm -hmm. So unless you've dealt with whatever uh, might be a problem, uh, you know that it's going to get uh, the defensive response is an attack right. and say, well, why don't you deal with yours? And that's not a bad statement. Mm -hmm. It's certainly bad in the context of having a, a discussion about your concern. That, but it's, it's like, yeah, what if I dealt with? You know, right. Perhaps I do drink too much on occasion. And what if I dealt with that? Right. You know, as and, kind of a role model or a, a trailblazer for my child, but also for you know yes. my own personal growth as a person. And it would work if you went to a say an AA meeting yourself, mm -hmm. but you didn't tell anybody about it. Doesn't not like it has to be a secret. But right. you're not doing it saying, okay, I went. Now you have to go. Right. Right. It's none of that kind of stuff. It's just I am doing this. I'm going to take the fear out of it. Yeah. You would certainly be better equipped if they said, you know, I think I may have a problem and I don't know where to go, you'd say, well, guess what? I know I where to go. To I found a really great meeting, yes. you know, and uh, then that would be a time to reveal that. Yeah. So how do you know if you're overreacting? I think what we're really saying is 
if you're concerned, then that's the time to have the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, if your child responds with anger, defensiveness, how dare you? You know, that's probably a little bit more of an indication that they're protecting something that they don't want to talk about, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it might not be. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then again, I think to, to be thinking through, and, and if you don't have a professional that you can go to, mm. we highly recommend that you look for somebody. Uh, psycho, uh, Psychology Today has a very good mm -hmm. uh, referral um, network and so does the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapists uh, to to start to think about what's my position with regard to what I'm willing to do in terms of an investment because a lot of parents think that uh, for example the car is a good issue so let's say I have provided a car I'm paying for the insurance and, and maybe helping with the gas so my child can go to college mm -hmm. and work Mm -hmm. And now they're getting, they got a DUI or a fender bender, which I'm concerned about that. But if I don't let them have the car, the big thing is, well, now I won't get to go to school or I can't go to work and you're depriving me of that. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. would you say to somebody who's in that quandary of wanting to assist, um, you know, assist their child and not, Codepend them in, right. in. Sometimes these symptoms, if, uh, for instance, if uh, your home is one where there was a divorce and mm -hmm. you really mm -hmm. don't deal with the co parent all that well, mm -hmm. now that the child is over 18, yeah. you know, that you don't even have to. And yet you know you're going to hear about it from that side. Right. You're being wrong, evil, bad, whatever it yeah. is. There's the fear that if I put my foot down, I'm not going to see my kid right. on the holidays. And yeah. So it, there's, it, there's some repercussions or some risk. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely is. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have the courage of your own convictions. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the point of, of therapy, to be able to take that position without trying to uh, let it go of the result. Whether yeah. the, your loved one does anything or not, you've taken this position because it's the right thing to do. You're not doing it to get them. Mm -hmm. And Al-Anon is a great resource for that, too, because uh, these are uh, people who are have a loved one, a spouse or a child uh, who's struggling with mm -hmm. alcoholism or, you know, some kind of an addiction. And they're in these same predicaments, right. you know, of I don't want to uh, destroy my relationship with this person, and yet... I know if I continue to give them money or let them use the car, um, you know, the worst case scenario, and we know with the heroin mm. opiate crisis is, is actual, you won't have a relationship with them because they're going to have died. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's not, again, it's not to put it on you to get them to stop, which is a natural response. If you do find out your child's mm. using uh, opiates or heroin, uh, would it's it's scary, mm -hmm. and yet you can't uh, you didn't create it and you can't cure it. So what can you do is at least say, well, I'm not going to make it easier for mm -hmm. them to use to use their substance. And the way we we would phrase it with our clients is, you have more of the pain right now mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this than your loved one does. Mm -hmm. If you work to hold on to a position which would be, uh, in this case, the car issue. I'm not letting you use this car um, while until I feel confident that you are going to be able to be responsible with it. Mm -hmm. um, that will push a little bit of the pain onto the other person, mm -hmm. and you're not doing it to do that, but that's what the result will be. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that this waiting is probably the worst thing that a person can do. That you mm. think, go 10 years down the road, and yeah. now you have grandchildren with this problematic right. person. And you might be able to say no to your own kid, but uh, knowing that if you say no to them, your grandkids yes. are going to suffer, it uh, makes just about anybody's knees buckle. It's really and tough. So it doesn't get easier waiting. No. It, it's not easier later. So just... 
to, to step up, dealing with it as you know about it. This is what I will do or won't do. Uh, for some who are, you know, they've been blessed you mm -hmm. know, that there's been, uh, they've done well in this country. There's going to be an, an inheritance. And yet knowing, wow, if I give this loved one this kind of inheritance, mm -hmm. it is going to not be a blessing. Mm -hmm. This is going to be wrong and bad. Yes, it may mean going to uh, your attorney and changing the will. Mm -hmm. This is not spite. This mm -hmm. is th this is what I'm doing now. And, uh, you know, wh uh, whether it's conditional, again, that's what attorneys do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give free access, free uh, a bunch of money resources to somebody who is out of control and unmanageable. So really what we're saying is if you're concerned you say something earlier. Yes. Don't wait. It doesn't get easier. And it's okay if you, let's say you misread something. They're failing classes. You're concerned that there might be drinking or using. And, you know, hopefully uh, you find out that it was uh, an undiagnosed uh, learning mm. difference. Mm -hmm or um, maybe they have uh, depression that they can work with um, and and yet getting that evaluation mm -hmm. you know to to rule out those things would be the first step and if you are as we said if you are financially providing for that person however old they are you do have some leverage. You can't force them to go, but you can also say, I'm not willing to continue to provide for you as long as we don't know what's going on. For our collegiate children, we let them know we were their scholarship committee. Right. And that we expected, uh, for our son, when we hadn't heard from him in two weeks, we yeah. let him know the scholarship committee was just disapproving and not happy with that. And we expected at least one phone call a week. And yeah. He was, he obliged. Yeah. <laughs> he just was well, busy and into We had the conversation and... with him when he started school, mm -hmm. a college. Uh, what, what do you think the minimum GPA should be for oh, yeah. the Bacon Family Scholarship Fund? And he said something like a 3.5. And, and we said, that's wonderful. So we're going to be a little more generous. 3.0 uh, will continue. But if you get below that, we'll know that you're doing something other than studying. And mm -hmm. we won't be able to know what it is, but we will know by the grades that mm -hmm. you're getting. And I don't think you ever saw a three five. Everything was above that. Yeah, so. yeah. So we want to uh, close by letting you know that we do have a program called Family Matters. It's a online program that teaches you how to deal with all of these issues of addiction and alcoholism with someone you love, a child or spouse. And if you're interested in it, just uh, type in uh, re relationshipuniversity.teachable.com. Don't put the three W's, just type that in. And uh, you will be able to see the uh, initial page that explains to you about the program. And you can also go to our website at Relationship Visions Inc. That's all one word, relationshipvisionsinc.com. And we'll have a tag on the, uh, on the website that you can click on and look as well. And we also have resources available for you as well and helping you um, navigate some of these difficult um, situations. So we'll continue to present these and let us know if you like this. We'd love it. If you would share it on your Facebook page and give us a like and make some comments and we'll continue to move forward together.